On the Radio is brought to you by Zurich Insurance, the perfect place to catch up with all things Melbourne. If you enjoy this content and want more inside access from the team, make sure you visit the club website. Maxie Gorn about to join us, the captain of the Melbourne Footy Club. It's Melbourne Membership Day today. You can get six membership, uh, a, a six-game Demons membership for 66 bucks. Head to membership.melbournefc.com.au. Kel Toomey also, Tim's trainer report, overreactions of the week. It's a big finish, yes? A yeah, big, big finish. Uh, I think Johnny made a really good point there. Why Which don't one? you do something about umpiring decisions <laughs> on your little show? Well, captain I'll take Foxtel. it under advise, uh, advisement. Because That's a great idea. Spend. We had Simon Goodwin booked in. He's gone down. He's gone down with the COVID. He's taken Luke Jackson. Well, no, no, he took him with him, but Luke's out. And uh, Cosy's out. And Tommy Sparrow's out. That's right. And we said if we can't if we can't get the coach, who would we next like to have on our program? You said Petrarca. <laughs> I said Clayton Oliver. <laughs> Neither of those guys were available. So who have we ended up with? We've got the premiership captain, Maxie. Go on, welcome, Maxie. Good morning, Gary. With it's yeah, just Maxie. nice to hear your voice. And you're not uh, a bit scratchy, you haven't got a runny nose or anything like that? No, no, no. I've uh, I've been monitoring uh, to make sure that nothing has been coming up and nothing's come up yet. So um, it is, I mean, you've seen it with other teams with West Coast and Frio and um, even a few Melbourne teams have had some players that have gone missing with, with, with COVID. And um, it just looks like it's our turn for the next two weeks. We had Viney and Lever last week and a couple of players this week. Hey, Maxie, just on that on that point, are you still being tested like every day? Do you have to sort of like test yourselves before you leave the house in the morning just to make sure that you're not already with COVID before you get to training or do you have to do it when you get there? What's the procedure around this now? Uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's still a, a rat test that we have to do every single morning before we get to the club, but um, I'm no scientist, but as you sort of know with COVID, you can get a negative rat test and still be um, with some symptoms and maybe be positive the next couple of days. So it's hard to, it is hard to manage, but um, we've done a pretty good job job up until now. And I, I dare say we're still doing a pretty good job because um, it looks like only we have four names at the moment that are, that, that are down and there could have been more. Is Toby Bedford, does he live with um, Luke and Cozzy? Yeah, Toby, Toby's doing one of the all-time dodgers of COVID. Um, <laughs> he's one of the, He's one of the few players that haven't had it uh, over the last 12 months and um, he's managed to get out of the house that Cozzy and Jacko were in and uh, he's he's clean at the moment. So yeah, you, well, that is. Yeah, so I was just going to say, no Jacko there this weekend. So who's your wingman this weekend? Uh, it's, a good, it's a good question. Um, obviously, Tom McDonald went out of the team last week, so uh, maybe a chance for him to come back in. But uh, Sam, Sam Wiedemann's been sort of trained up to be that second ruck for three or four years. And then Luke came in and um, te- technically took his spot. But now Sam's got a chance to maybe um, get it back. Okay. So what's your advice to Sam? Uh, he's jumping advice at the centre bounce then, if that's the case. Uh, Sam's actually... <laughs> so if you look at the two, so you've got Sam and Tom. Um, I know where you're getting at. You're trying to, you're trying to get me to save his PCL, but... No, I'm not. Um, no, I'm not. I'm just, I'm, uh, I'm just wondering what it is that you'd instruct him to do. That's all. Uh, so out of Sam and Tom, Sam's actually the one that's really competitive at centre bounce and has been every time he's gone in. So um, I don't actually have to talk to Sam too much. And um, if it is Tom, I might have to take him take him aside and do some centre bounce work w- with him. Is it? I mean, we Ray Chamberlain was on uh, our station yesterday with Jerry Waitley. He spoke about a plumb line between the footy, explaining yeah you know, this free kick situation in the centre bounce that if you go past where the ball is in the air, past that line, if you drew a line straight to the ground and then don't touch it, that's the free kick. I mean, with the PCLs now, and I know you've been pinged from time to time using arms, is that a frustration for the for the rucking fraternity that they can't use arms more to protect themselves? Uh, well, there certainly is um, some set of bounds free kicks that a lot of us um, struggle with. Um, but I mean, they right. they are written in the rule. They are written in the rule rule, rule book, and there is a, uh, a lot got to do with your arm. And I actually haven't hurt my PCL in my whole uh, life being a ruckman. I actually, the time I hurt my PCL was as a full forward, and I had a defender come back and hit me across the knee. So um, I've been quite lucky within the centre bounce, and I do use my arm as a bit of a shocker, so to to lessen the load from my knee. I've had a few knee issues in my time, so. Um, I like to protect that right knee when I'm in in in, in there, but um, with that arm, uh, with the rule book as as it is, I tend to give away a few frees as well. 
I was listening to Ray again, and I'm not sure if this is the audio we've got <clears throat> teed up, but he said that the arms, if one ruckman uses the arm, then it's an issue. But if both ruckmen use arms, then there's no issue. So how does, it, how does that work? You talk to the other ruckman and say, listen, well, why don't we both, both use arms here and we can go at it? <laughs> It's a great question, Gary. It's probably an off-air topic for me and you to have a chat about. But, um, no, look, if, if you look at the two PCL incidents from the weekend, the, the, the Grundy one is, um, I, I, I think we shouldn't react to that. That that looks like a freak of nature type incident. Um, and I've never seen a PCL sort of go like that when Brody was higher than Draper in the actual run yeah. contest. But the Pitnet and Darcy one is probably the more concerning one. That's... That's the one, if I've lost two or three centre bounces in a row, I'm doing what Pitnet and Darcy do. I'm cracking in as hard as I can mm. to, make sure I, to make sure I win that hit. And that looks like the, the one that we're all sort of getting concerned about. But to be fair, that is the only one. So yeah. um, I don't know much about Nick Nat and Tom Hickey, but I'm pretty sure they weren't from impact in their PCLs and centre bounces. So we're just looking at that Mark Pitnet one, really. Yeah, so we're not trying to you know, get you into trouble at all, but you're satisfied. Like there's, I think Scotty Pendlebury might have said, is it time to have a look at it? And I'm sure you know, the powers that be will be exploring these things. But you, as the premier ruckman in this competition, are, are happy enough with where it sits with the circle and the line? Uh, yeah, well, I can only go off my history and um, my PCL has been basically fine in every single ruck contest I've been involved in. So... Um, and saying, saying that, I'm touching a lot of wood at the moment and hoping yeah. that it stays like that. But um, from my point of view, I'm relatively comfortable with 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 where the the rules are in terms of um, the circle, and they're trying to protect the rucks as much as they can. But um, like I said, in the Pitnet Darcy one, they're both cracked in as hard as they can to win it, and unfortunately, Pitnet's come off with a PCL. Hey Max, if they did away with the bounce, okay, let's just say hypothetically they do away with the bounce, they throw the ball up all the time. Is that going to advantage somebody like you or disadvantage somebody like you? Do you think? Uh, I'm a I'm a I'm a bounce fan. I think bounce um, brings in some variable that um, almost protects your PCL, but also gives you a chance against an incredible jumper. Um, mm. almost the likes of uh, Nick, Nick, Nat and Magic Door that we have a training. Um, if you have a bit of uh, a bounce and variable bounce and it goes to different parts of the circle, you can protect yourself a little bit more. Where they throw it up, that's almost a perfect three-metre throw where you're both doing a one, two, three, step, jump, bang, straight into each other. Uh, uh, other. So from a protection point of view, I'm a big bounce man. From a um, I love the game and yep. I love the history of the game. I'm also a bounce man from that point of view as well. I know you're a meticulous preparer for the game. Do you know, have you got a, 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 a bounce book? Do you have, have you got a book there somewhere that you record all the umpires and who's good at bouncing and you get out there before the game and you're like, oh, okay, we've got these four umpires. Uh, this bloke's not a bad centre bounce um, umpire. This bloke's just okay. Do you look at it that closely? Uh, yeah, I, I, I do know which umpires can get a high bounce and which umpires um, struggle with their bounce height. Um, and it's something that I'm guessing most rucks would know because if you are caught off the, caught on the hop and you do get someone who bounces it a little bit lower, like a Ray Chamberlain or a Lee Fisher, um, you can almost miss the contest. And then if you get someone who's quite high, like a Matty Nichols, you, you get in there too early and you're a sitting duck. So um, I think most rucks would know um, which umpires bounce high and which ones low. Um, with Maxi Gorn, the captain of the Melbourne Footy Club, are undefeated at the moment. Um, how do you how have you rated the season? Um, I obviously clearly watch every game closely, and you guys just keep winning. But I don't reckon you've hit your straps at a hundred percent yet, and nor do you want to at this early part of the year. So how how are you seeing it? Uh, yeah, there's still a lot to learn, and um, we're learning every single game. And to be fair, if you've watched all six Melbourne games. Probably apart from the Port Adelaide game, each team has had a had a red hot chance to to get in front and 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 hold a lead, and I think they all have got in front at some point as well. So um, it's something that we're continually learning. Yeah, we're six and zero, and if you had have asked me two weeks after the grand final if we'd be six and zero, I thought we were drinking way too much and would be one and seven. But um, <laughs> we'll, we managed to get ourselves into a good preseason and. Um, to be in the position we are in now, and um, it, it is it is really exciting. And um, I know it's Melbourne Membership Day, and we're trying to get as many guys, as many people, to sign on as possible. And 65 would be an incredible number. Yeah, well, six game demon memberships a good idea at 66 bucks. I tell you, it'll be the best 66 you spend, given the way they're playing at the moment. Um, how important is it that you've got these blokes underneath that haven't experienced what you know, the lucky 23 did last year over in Perth, pushing as hard as they are? Uh, yeah. 
in the off-season, um, I certainly thought, and speaking to Jordan Lewis, who um, had one for himself, um, it, it, it is those guys that drive it. And I was I was hoping that Jaden Hunt, Sam Wiedemann, Adam Tomlinson, Kate Chandler, these sort of guys would come back and really drive it. But to be fair, they have. But it, but it's been Christian Petraka and Clayton Oliver and Jack Viney's in the in the form of his 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 life. Unfortunately, COVID's come and hit him last week, but. Um, it's been a real 45 sort of list type setup where everyone's come back in ripping Nick wanting to, um, I know we've been talking about it. We wanted to been doing it in Melbourne and wanted to have a great year in Melbourne and potentially play some finals in Melbourne, but, um, it's been in their actions. Everyone has delivered on those words and, um, yeah, we're six and zero. We're in a really good spot to, to be able to keep going, but you take the, you take the foot off the pedal and you're up against a side like Hawthorne who beat Geelong by, 30, 40 points at um, the MCG just two weeks ago. You can you can easily lose a couple in a row. Talking to Melbourne captain Maxie Gorn, how are the wine bars going, Max? Uh, the first one's still still going well. Obviously, um, two years of COVID cooked a lot of hosp- hosp- hospitality mm. venues, but we were able to get our way through that, which was which was good. And um, the second one opens up in June. It's called uh, it's called Motor. Um, it's a it's an old garage up in Gary's neck of the woods up near Rococo, the top of Glenferry Road. Oh, there. I tell right. you what, Tim, primo real estate in Glenferry Road, Hawthorne. It is going to go mm. off. Mm. Have you got a nice so, little, hope- nice little Grenache for Gary? He's a Grenache drinker, as you'd well know. <laughs> uh, we've got a lot for Gary. I'm I'm so I'm still schooling myself up in wine. I, I love hosp- hosp- hospitality and wine was the way I went. So I'm only trained to just sell the bottle that's the best markup. Um, so, that's, that's smart. <laughs> so if you come to the bar, it'll, it'll be unfortunately it might not be the best wine, but it'll be the one that gets in my pocket the best. He, will, will Goody be uh, a regular at uh, at the bar as well, or has he been uh, sworn off that given what happened during the off season? There's unfortunately Goody's Goody's pretty stock standard. He loves a Carlton draft pot, and unfortunately we don't have Carlton on tap. So Goody Goody steers clear from the uh, from the bar, but. No doubt myself and Simon will catch up for a pot at some point. You're still allowed to socialise with him, though, surely? Uh, not for the next seven days, but... Um, <laughs> no. like, yeah, after that, you're fine. <laughs> yeah. Once he's out, yes. I, that was a storm in a teacup, that. I'm, if, I'm more, I'd be more upset if I can't have a pot in my, with my coach. I'd be, I'd be a bit worried about that. Hey, Maxie, you're down the peninsula. Are you looking for a bit of land? I'm, I, is that the whisper? Everyone speaks down here. They all talk about the side yeah. of their mouth. They say Maxie's in the market for a bit of land. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretending uh, I'm an inner city boy and I'm as city as they come. Um, I actually didn't know what the word harvest meant um, up until a couple mm. of months ago, but I'm pretending that I want a hobby farm, but I have no idea what I'm going to do with a, hob- with a hobby farm. Do you have to have animals on the, ho- on the ho- hobby farm or can you just... You, oh, it <laughs> helps. It you're, helps. Speaking to, you're speaking to two <laughs> blokes that know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, a couple of animals would yeah, help. Um, and a tractor. Tim, Tim's got a big farm actually down at uh, Glen Maggie, but... Um, he hasn't quite taken the step to become a fully fledged farmer. He's not allowed yeah. to have a tractor. I can put some cattle. What's cattle? Is cattle sheep or cows? I can put some cattle on, can't I? <laughs> no, you've got a bit to learn. Yeah, you gotta, you've got some <laughs> learning to do. Hey, um, it's great of you to join us. It is a Melbourne membership day, and I know the push is on. Um, what a time. If you're not a Melbourne member and you're a supporter, then this is the time to get involved. And you, if, you know, financially, sometimes it's hard for people, but six game Demons membership for 66 bucks, it's pretty good value given what uh, lays ahead for the Demons. Uh, and to have 70, 80,000 there at the MCG on Sunday night was a terrific occasion. And um, we've got a lot of MCG games still to come. And I know our Melbourne fans love, love going to the G. So um, there's some really good games in there, including Queen's, Queen's birthday, which is coming up in a couple of weeks as well. Uh, absolutely sensational, mate. We appreciate you jumping on and good luck for the rest of the year. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Tim. On you, Max.